basic techniques of dental lock anesthesia. There are several methods of achieving pain control with local anesthetic agents. A variety of techniques used in administration and deposition of these local anesthetic agents, which include number one, topical anesthetic technique, or it's called surface or topical anesthesia, two, infiltration technique, three, block technique, or regional technique. The selection of the type of local anesthesia depends on uh, local anesthetic uh, technique depends on the area and the type of the surgery. Number one, topical or surface anesthesia. By this method, small terminal nerves in the surface area of the, of the, of the intact mucosa or the skin, superficial nerve ending up to a depth of about 2 mm and a size by the application of topical anesthetic agent directly to the area. This method commonly used to obtain a CZ of mucosa prior to the injection for a part of the injection for making the insertion of the needle painless prior to carrying out incision and drainage of abscess, prior to the removal of sutures, and prior to making full mouth impression for a dental patient. For tubicular anesthesia, we have several preparation and preparations and forms. A sprays. A spray containing an appropriate local anesthetic agent are particularly suitable for this purpose because, or because of their ability of action. The achieved the active ingredient is 10% or, or, uh, or 15 of lignocaine hydrochloride in water base, which have rapidity of onset. The onset of the of time of, time of, of anesthesia is approximately 1 minute, and the duration of anesthesia is approximately 10 minutes. B ointments. Ointment containing 5% of lignocaine hydrochloride can be used for the similar purpose, but it takes uh, 3 to 4 minutes to produce surface anesthesia. C an emulsion. Emulsion can take 2% of lignocaine hydrochloride is also available. This is of value with the, when full mouth impressions have been taken in patients who are, who are prone to hatching. D ethyl chloride spray. Ethyl chloride. When spray on either skin or mucosa volatilize so rapidly that is quickly produced a seizure by refrigeration. This phenomenon, this phenomenon is of clinical value only when the spray is directed at the limit of a limited area until the snow appears. Care must be taken to avoid stimulation of the pulse of the adjacent TT. This technique is, is of limited value but is occasionally used to produce surface and seizure prior to their incision for all flexion acids. Infil to infiltration anesthesia. In this method, the acid solution deposited near the terminal fibers of any nerve. It will infiltrate through the tissue to reach the nerve fibers and thus produce anesthesia of the localized area served by them. The maxilla have a thin labial and buccal cortical blade and the maneuver shows area of porosity. And the uh, compact bone present numerous phenomena uh, foramen which aid in absorption of local anesthetic solution. These factors, therefore, make the maxilla more favorable for infiltration as, as three techniques. The mandible bone. The, the mandible bone is generally dense and have, uh, has a thicker cortical base than the maxilla, particularly in the posterior region, so only the anterior part of the mandible presents a sufficient quantity, which is favorable for the infiltration techniques. Infiltration anesthesia has several advantages, which are number one, easy and simple injection, two, a very high success rate, three, good control of bleeding. While its action is limited to the small, small area, consider its only its advantages. Technique of filtration anesthesia the needle. The recommended gauge is 25 or 27 or 30, and the recommended length is 25 mm, bubble of the needle. The bubble should be phased upon. Point of insertion, it is the middle of the area to be operated and the point of the needle is at an angle of about 45 degree to the long axis of the root to be in a size. Depth of the preparate of the ventilation is beneath the mucous membrane into the connective tissue. This technique may require more than one needle insertion depends on depending on the extent of the area to be in a size. Care should be taken to avoid injury to the tissue in the following ways. Number one, avoid injecting the solution too rapidly. Two, avoid injecting too large a volume of local sac solution. 
three of the injective tools superficially. These situations will result in injury to the tissue in the, in the, uh, in the form of pain at the time of injection or, res or resistant post-injection pain. Signs and symptoms after giving the infiltration injection, the lack of demonstration of pain will with instrumentation indicates that our injection was successful. Types of infiltration anesthesia. There are several types of infiltration anesthesia depending upon the site of the position of local sac solution. On the base of the position of the site, this, this technique includes a submucous injection. In this technique, the solution is deposited just beneath the mucous membrane. A solution diffuses through the interstitial tissue and reaches the internal fibers of the nerve in the area of the deposition of the local sac solution. This technique is unlikely to produce an anesthesia or a dental bulb. It is often employed to excise the long buccal nerve prior, prior to the extraction of the mandibular nerves or for the soft tissue surgery. B. Subrabriostal uh, sub, injection. In some sites, such as maxilla, the outer cortical plate of the alveolar bone is still unperforated by thin, by tiny vascular canals. In these areas, when a sac solution is deported outside the periosteum, it will infiltrate through the periosteum, a cortical plate, and the medullary bone to the nerve fibers. By this means, an anesthesia of a dental bulb can be contained or could be obtained by injection alongside the approximate uh, position of the apex. A supraperiosteal injection is the technique most frequently used in dentistry. See submucous injection. In this technique, the solution is deposited between the periosteum and the cortical blade or beneath the periosteum. This technique is painful since the periosteum is firmly attached to the cortical blade. D. Supplementary injection. These are other methods of reducing local anesthesia. They are satisfactory when, uh, execute, when executed properly. Each has its place of application in dentistry. Sometimes, these will reduce local anesthesia where all other methods fail. Methods fail. Those techniques are not advised for the for beginner and the, for beginners and they give good results in experienced hands. Those techniques include number one, intraligamentary or dental injection. As the name suggests, the local sac solution is deposited into the periodontal ligament or, or membrane. The local sac solution is carried from the alveolar bone and through the apical foramen to the bulb chamber. The local sac solution is injected alongside along the periodontal membrane of the maxillary and mandibular tear using a small amount of local sac solution, usually 0.2 ml, delivered via a superficial design system, which comprises of high pressure syringes and uh, ultra fine needles. The high pressure forces solution rather than causing diffusion through the periodontal ligament to the nerves in, the, in this area. This technique can also be carried out by the conventional syringe. syringe. However, care must be ex ex exercised to avoid shattering of the glass uh, cartridge. The needle is inserted into the gingival sulcus and into the periodontal ligament. This technique can exercise only single individual tooth. A single, single root tooth should be injected on the mesial and distal sides while the multi root uh, teeth are injected over each root. In oral surgery, this technique is most frequently used if pain is being, is being despite the normal techniques of infiltration or black anesthesia. This can occur with a tooth with acute pulpitis or periapical infection. It may also be of value in case of limitation of mouth opening, which makes the blood injection difficult or impossible. To intrapapal anesthesia, this technique is indicated for obtaining anesthesia for a procedure which requires direct instrumentation of a pulp tissue. First, put a cotton ball, soak in a stack solution in the cavity, wait for a minute, and the and a 2 to a 26 or 27 gauge needle is inserted directly into the bulb chamber. The needle should be held firmly into the bulb chamber or the root canal. Initially, slight comfort is filled by the patient, which subsequently gets subsided. Sometimes the needle is needed to get a proper angle for good approach. 3. Intra ulcers injection technique. In this technique, the local solution is deposited directly into the cancellous bone. 
adjacent to the, the teeth to be anesthetized between the uh, two cortical plates of the bone, of the maxilla, and the mandible. An incision is made in the mucosa, and the bryosium, and a small opening is made in the outer cortical layer of the bone. The drill is similar to 25 gauge needle. The needle is inserted into the opening, created an approximately 0.5 to 1 mL of solution is slowly injected under pressure. Anesthesia by intraosseous method will not be of very long duration, possibly between 10 to 20 minutes. Look at the filtration of the, of the palate. The anesthesia of the heart palate is necessary for the dental procedures involving manipulation of the, of the brittle soft and hard tissues. The brittle injection is one of the most painful injections, so it's advisable, it's advisable to inform the patient prior to injection about the pain during the injection. This helps in preparation, preparing, the, preparing the patient psychologically. This tissue is prepared, the tissue is prepared with an antiseptic antiseptics. Take the other preload syringe and insert the needle at the point of insertion, which is in the mucobriosium of uh, on a line, a line one centimeter from the marginal gingiva, or in a midway between the marginal gingiva and the median palatal line at an angle of of uh, 45 to the uh, bony surface. Penetrate the mucobriosium with the needle to touch the bone gently. Withdraw the needle by, by one millimeter and was about 0.25 to 0.5 mm of solution in the area to be in a size. Withdraw the needle slowly, cover the needle and keep it uh, aside. Later, the patient will feel some numbness at the area and lack of demonstration of pain with the instrumentation. Regional or block anesthesia in this technique, the anesthetic solution deposited near the main nerve trunk, usually at a distance from the side of surgical procedure, and this will lead to blocking all impulses and produce anesthesia of the area supplied by, the, by that nerve. Through this technique, though, this technique may be used in the maxilla, but it is of particular value in dentistry for reducing anesthesia in the mandible, mainly in the premolar and molar area. The use of filtration technique in the mandible is unreliable due to the density of the cortical of the outer cortical plate of bone by placing the anesthetic solution in a trigonal mandibular space near the mandibular foramen. Mandibular foramen region, regional mandibular foramen. Regional anesthesia over the whole distribution of the inferior dental nerve on that side is obtained. This technique of blood injection. The block technique can be achieved either by uh, intraoral or extraoral approach. Number one, nerve block for maxillary nerve and its branches. A intraoral nerve block blocks, which is number one, posterior superior nerve block. Number two, infraorbital nerve block. Number three, greater palatine nerve block. Four, nasal palatine nerve, nerve block. Five, maxillary nerve block. B. Extraoral nerve blocks, which are number one, maxillary nerve block, number two, mandibular nerve block. Two, nerve, nerve block for mandibular, for mandibular nerve and its branches. A. Intraoral nerve block, which is number one, inferior dental nerve block, number two, lingual nerve block, number three, lung buccal nerve block, number four, mental nerve block, number five, gum gaze nerve block. Number six, Vizinani, Alkinozi nerve block. B, extraoral nerve block, which are mandibular nerve block. Management. Number one, stop the dental procedure. Two, position the patient supine with legs elevated. Three, gives assurance to the patient. Four, administrate, administrate oxygen and IV anticonvulsant on and monitor vital signs. Five, allow the patient to recover. Then discharge. Six. If the patient fails to re recover, then transfer him to their to a general hospital heading intensive care unit facility. Drug interactions. In some patients, the administration of two drugs will counteract each other, while in other potentiation uh, occurs. In patients using trisac in variable degrees of potentiation of blood pressure response to adrenaline and noradrenaline will occur, even to small doses. Therefore. Precaution should be taken during uses of this uh, of this vasoconstrictor with patients using trisac and debrasic. The practitioner can minimize the risk of interaction by using an aspirating syringe, which 
re reduce the likelihood of local cell anesthesia being administrated directly into the blood vessels. Emergency. The role of dental practitioner in management of a medical emergency being with the, with the prevention of such, such situations. This comprises the following. Number one, thorough knowledge, thorough medical evaluation. Two, knowledge of the drugs presently taken. Three, training in basic, in basic life support or cardiopulmonary cessation for administration of emergency drugs. The following is a list of the drugs to remain available for a static emergency with their dosage, dose, routes of administration and their indications. Okay. Thank you for your listening.